Well, I'm excited to be here right now with David Hooker after you just gave an amazing talk about visual literacy. Now, I have to comment that your talk was accompanied by the coolest visuals, starting with a green door, going through all those Getty images. Tell me, what was that all about? How'd you do it? So, uh, I'm fortunate enough, and I hinted about this when I was on stage, but I'm fortunate enough to work for a company called Prezi, and we've been disrupting the, the visual presentation market for, oh, since 2009 now. And the technology I actually used on the stage was, um, not the very first, but one of the one of the first uses usages of a product that we're calling, at least at the moment, Prezi AR. So, uh, as you can see, there was a combination of me and the images, and we got to interact a bit. Like uh, when I took the selfie, I got to position myself behind the girl taking the selfie. I kind of photo bombed her. I, I got to. Uh, there was an archway of emojis. I got to step into the archway, that kind of thing. So this is something that we're working on hard, uh, and at the moment is kind of limited in its release, but we've done it for a, a big TED talk and uh, a couple of other places. And hopefully it's something that the, the whole public is going to get their hands on not too, not too far away from now. So it's all about images, but can you put into words the power of these, this new Prezi technology? What it does to, I don't know, amplify a speaker? So I think what it does is it puts you in with your content. If you're presenting, right, and you're using slides, and, and you need to use visuals because, I don't know, you're explaining a complex, um, as we've seen people here today, so like a, a complex microbe or something like that, or anything that, that needs a, a drawing, you use a slide because you, you, what the slide is effectively doing is it's that moment where you say to someone, I'll draw it for you, it's easier. What this does is to take that degree of separation away from you because it's always me, slide, me, slide. Even the best slides, so if you go through the rules like cutting out the text, having powerful visuals, even the very best slides are not where you are. You have to look to the left, to, to the right, look up, look down. They're not where you are. They take your attention away from the speaker. This new technology puts you inside your content. So you're really immersed in there. You can interact with it. Like it's, it's really more integral to the story because you're there and your content is fingertip away from you. Fascinating. Well, I thought that was an incredibly effective use and I love the way you describe it. That really you know, brings it home. So I want to ask you a, a, a question related to visual literacy. Mm -hmm. Can you make a connection between that and like human free will? I mean, really? Ooh. Um, that's a tough ask, Lee. Uh, I, I would. I wouldn't want to say anything definitive with, without uh, some, some numbers to back me up. Uh, what I can say, though, is that we, and I think this is people everywhere, like w whether they, you know, whatever country, background, religion, whatever they're coming from, we don't ever get taught about the way in which to interpret an image. Maybe in art history class you do, but like, at least where I'm from, art history isn't an option until you get to high school. Mm -hmm. And it's an option, an option that people don't really take, yeah. right? So. You're being exposed to images. Well, I mean, when was the first time the children are picking up an iPad or watching the TV? Like it's two, three years old, right? So we've got to think about how these images are influencing people. And I, I don't want to say don't consume them. Consume them. Visuals are wonderful. They're, they're awesome. But we have to understand the effect that they're having on us. And I just feel that the best way to do that is to try and do it yourself. Even if you suck at it, mm -hmm. do it. Suck at it. But then appreciate the difficulty in, in making something and you'll appreciate how that person wanted you to feel when they made it. I totally understand what you're saying. And you can also, it turns you from no longer being just a passive receptacle receiving the image to um, a person who can create them. And so we'll look m with more free will and skepticism at, a, at an image that yeah. is presented. And it's taking the same principles that, I mean, at least I learned at school. Like the, my favorite class at school and what I did at university was history. And I loved it because the school teacher got up in front of me and said, don't believe anything that any of these books I'm about to give you say, right? And she, the first lesson she taught us, I really remember, was doubt everything. Consider the, the, the writer's motives for everything. But you don't consider the writer's motives when they take a picture, right? right. You just look at it and go, oh, that's pretty, right? But you, we should because all of these, you know, 
all of these devices and things. And if you ever see one of those dystopian uh, future movies like Blade Runner or what's the one with uh, Scarlett Johansson recently? Um, oh, it's based on the Japanese manga. People who are fans of it will hate me for not remembering. But but visuals are a huge part of that. Like the visuals in, in both of those series have become 3D and you can explore them and go around them and advertising, like Minority Report, for example, mm -hmm. is another one, right? It recognizes your eyes and then displays the, the right visual to you. That's, okay, that might not be exactly what we're headed towards, but we can see that visuals are becoming more and more important, right? But the seriously important thing is the ability to be good with visuals is now becoming more widespread, right? It's be yeah. Anyone can do now the editing programs on your phone, the, the courses you can go take. You can go take free online courses to learn photography. Like They're on my Facebook feed all the time. So the ability to be good with images is no longer something that that's, you know, only special designery, arty people can do, right? And we always, dis we always dismiss it as, I'm not good at art, I can't draw, I didn't go to design school, I don't know what I'm doing. But you can be a filmmaker, a photographer, uh, a graphic novelist with a smartphone. So we should use that power <laughs> to understand the images that are put in front of us, I think. Well, that's, that's really inspiring. So tell me just about you as a kid. <laughs> Were you a storyteller, a doodler, a drawer, a drawer of cats? <laughs> um, I did doodle obsessively. Wow. I don't think anyone really liked my doodles except for me. <laughs> um, I remember my French teacher telling me to stop doing it. Um, but yeah, I was definitely someone who liked to tell stories. Um, uh, and I think that's still the case. Like a part of my talk was about going to a bar and I still enjoy going to bars. But in that, in the talk uh, over a decade ago, I, you know, I went to the bar to dance. I, these days I kind of sit around and, and bore people with stories. But um, the reason I found myself in Korea where the, the first part of my talk was set, was I deliberately went there so I could have more stories. When I arrived, when I arrived at university, uh, I, w I come from like pretty much the most sheltered, Caucasian town in the whole of England. We had uh, two black kids at school. Two. They were twins. <laughs> and they were adopted. So um, it was, you know, that gives a kind of indication of how sheltered it was from the rest yeah. of the world. And when I got to university, which was less sheltered, I'm all these people from all these different places, and we would sit around drinking and talking before we went dancing, and I had no stories. I mean, I had some stories, but like theirs were way better. Like, you know, I was six years in South Africa and I went surfing and a shark almost got me. I was in China and I've eaten monkey brain or whatever it is. And I was like, I've been to Euro Disney. <laughs> and um, it's not all that impressive, Euro Disney. Sorry, Euro Disney. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've, I think since then, I've really always been hunting for stories. Well, David Hooker, I have to say, in brightening your life, you have brightened many people's lives, and your talk was inspiring and really beautiful to watch. Thank you so much for being part of TEDx Beacon Street. Thank you, Lee.